Hey what's up everybody it's Bruce in this video I want to show you how to fix a broken key on your laptop if you have one. So in this case it's the Q key and as you can see it just kind of, it still actually works but it, um, it constantly falls off and pops up. So after doing a little bit of research I kind of figured out what the mechanisms are here and how they work. So I went ahead and took mine apart. Let's zoom in there. Okay, here's a close-up of the key itself. You can see that's the Q key. I just popped it off. It kind of snaps in and out. Um, it, for, for this, you really don't need to use any kind of type of tool. In this case, it just pops right off. And basically what you'll find is there's about four main pieces to consider. You have the top piece, actually, that your finger touches. Then you have this mechanism here. I guess it's three hinges in this mechanism. You have the two that are mounted to the key itself, and then uh, one which uh, locks in these these uh, these two pieces together. So you have that piece, you have the key itself, you have a rubber um, spring actually here, and then you have another um, mount right here. Now, what I did to kind of fix my problem was I actually went to a different computer and examined as close as I could what the difference is from that computer to this computer was, like what's actually missing, what's broken here. So after looking at it pretty closely, what I found is, well, let's, you know, let's go over to my other PC and pop a key off and then compare them and, and see if we can see the difference. So I'm going to slide this out of the way and bring this other computer. It's a totally different type of PC, but we'll go ahead and go for the same key once again. We'll go for that Q key. Now this one is working perfectly fine, but this computer here is actually going to be recycled, so I don't care about this computer. Um, and so I'm just going to stick, what I found the best works is like if you just stick a screwdriver under and just slowly torque it, whoa, that one popped right off, real easy. If it's like stuck or not doing it right, try to come at it at a different angle. And uh, anyway, usually it comes off real easy like that. And so then you see once again, basically the same mechanism, different color plastic here, but it's uh, essentially the same thing. You can see how it has the basically uh, three hinges, one, two, and then the hinge holding the two together, which is right about there. All right, so let me go ahead and grab this key so you can take a look at it. This one actually, you know, it should be like that, but let's see if we can, let's see if we can go ahead and get this out of here. So if you look very closely, so there, like I said, there are two uh, main hinges holding this mechanism onto the key itself. Um, one of them right there and then one of them right there. So I'm just going to get the screwdriver underneath like the corner here. Oops, try to. And see if we can pop it out. No? Alright, so I'm just going to try to get the screwdriver under this side here and just give it a little bit of, little bit of torque and see if it wants to come out. Yeah, it looks like the front popped, so I'm going to go ahead and stick it under there a little bit more. Yep, and then the whole thing just popped out real easy. Okay, so this is the original the original one from the computer, which I want to get working. And here's the original key, so I'm going to go set this key over there on that other keyboard. Alright, so what you can what we're comparing here is the, is the white one here. Because that's, yeah, the white and the black one, because that's the two parts which are connected to this black PC, this Toshiba. And what you'll notice is the, the problem that you, you should probably notice now is that this this gray one, are we in focus? Yeah. This gray one only actually has this these pivots here, but it's missing its pivots in the front. Over here you have one, two, three, four. This one you just have one, two. So it's missing two of the pivots and if you look closely uh, you probably can't see with the camera but they're actually they've been sheared off and so that's the main problem uh, the, these pivots aren't uh, aren't there anymore it's, it's broken this piece is actually faulty now so what I should be able to do I haven't tried it yet with this computer is I should be able to take the this one off of here place it onto the key the gray key which is the one that I want to work so let's go ahead and see if we can get this um, mechanism off of here. And just like the other, I'll, I'll just try to work my, my screwdriver underneath there and give it a little bit of torque. Yep. 
Well, how's that for a video? I think I actually just broke this one too. But, you know, this PC is a, uh, is a test PC or junk PC, so I'm not too worried about it, but that's pretty funny. Yep. All right, well, whatever. This is a good lesson, so you can see what I did. I actually broke this one. Let's, let's get this in close. So I hope you can see this, but actually I broke this one. So this side has that little, uh, that little shaft, and this one's missing it because I just snapped it off. Because So basically you shouldn't simply lift like that. That was not the right way to do that, apparently. So I broke this one, um, but I, I'll practice getting the rest of this off anyway. Okay, that came off real easy. Actually, what I did to get this one off is I just pushed it that way, and then that kind of gave it enough room to to pass these hooks here. All right, so I screwed that one up, so now we have two broken ones. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's go over to our next victim, which will be the W. I suspect the mechanisms are exactly the same, so it should be fine. So I'm gonna try to pop that off. There it goes, no problem. Got the old key off. Oh, and by the way, here's that, that little rubber spring that came off the other one. I'll set that aside too. Set all these keys aside. And let's see if we can do a better job getting this thing off without breaking it. So last time I was able to get this top part off pretty easily just by pushing a little bit of pressure like that. Let's see if we can repeat that success. Mm, not really coming too easily. So basically one of the tips I wanted to give in this video is the one of the best ways probably to do this is to have a junk computer uh, that you can use for parts. And in fact, when I'm done with this uh, little project, I'll take several of these off and just set them in my spare parts area, just, you know, in case I get another key that's broken one day before I recycle this PC. Hmm. I'm sure I'm sure somebody's watching out there that's like a real re uh, computer repair person that's just shaking their head. They're like, come on, that's not a hard thing to take off. But, you know, this is only a second time I've ever done this. I did this on another PC just the other day, and that's why I wanted to make the video. Okay, there we go. I was able to torque that one, that one off. Anyway, and it worked actually perfectly the first time, so, you know, just bad luck. This one is a little bit more stubborn. Okay, so we got this top part off free without breaking anything. Now the next thing will be to get those other two feet free without breaking anything. So I'm kind of trying to apply the same uh, technique which is just kind of pressing from the side, trying to compress it a little bit to, uh, to free this, this, uh, metal, this metal bracket. And, and the thing is, this metal bracket has no escape, you know, no side part that it can come out of. I think the other one does. And so basically the only way out is to, to press it that way. So I think I have a pretty good angle at it now. hope you can see this. Mm, yeah, I think, I think you can get the picture. Basically, I'm just trying to press these feet together so they'll will come out without breaking them. I hope my, my hands don't get in the way of your view too much. Whoop, whoa, there it goes. <laughs> and I think it's intact. Yep, great. So now we have a non-broken sample. You can see there's the foot there, there's the other foot there, there's that one there, and then that one there. All right, so I think this one's in good shape. So I'm going to then go over to my silver computer, which is the one we want to fix, and compare compare the parts, the broken part, to this good part side by side and see see what it looks like. All right, here we are back at the computer I want to fix with the parts side by side. The one that should be good compared to the one that we know is bad. Well, what this video was going to be about was how to uh, fix your, your keys on your keyboard if one of them starts falling off. But uh, what I found is actually different keyboards aren't exactly the same in terms of the specifications of this mechanism. So I have a Toshiba here and a Sony, and they actually have different, uh, they're a little bit different. It's the same design basically, but basically the mounts are a little bit further apart on this one, and so they're not interchangeable. Uh, before I had changed uh, these on another computer recently, and I thought that because those two were the same, that all of them would be the same, but actually they're not. So I can't really do a proper video here. So what I'm gonna do is just tell you about you know, just kind of show you uh, me salvaging a couple of these keys off of these computers before I send them out to recycling. So these, these ones on this uh, Toshiba are quite a bit more difficult to get off than the Sony for some reason. 
you really have to be careful and, and well basically the reason why is this has a metal frame that's just a, a solid loop whereas the other was more hooks you could slide them out more easily these ones you need to basically compress this entire uh, mechanism the plastic you need to actually bend it to get it out of the out of that metal ah oh, and I just broke that one get it out of the metal loop so that one's no good let's move on to the next one like I said this whole computer is going to the the recycling bin soon so it doesn't really matter let's try it again there might be a better way last time I just tried going like that and that just kind of broke it there we go okay we got one one leg free hope you can see that okay okay that looks pretty good so we got one one leg free once you get one free it, I think it's easier so now I'm gonna press the opposite side I got the other one free easily now I can more easily manipulate this whole thing uh, let's try to get that black one free too. I do it the same method. Just kind of push. Hope I don't break it. There. Whoa. Okay. And yeah, it's it looks good. So I got. Hope you can see that I have the all four of the outer feet are free. So I'm going to keep that. And in total, these are the parts I'm saving. It's uh, a few of the springs and a few of the uh, mechanisms. As you can see, they're not exactly the same. These, these uh, ones from the Toshiba are quite a bit more bulky than the ones for the uh, Sony. So I'll just keep these in my spare parts area in case I, I do have another broken key. But uh, that's about it for this video, I guess. Sorry to disappoint that I can't actually show you how to repair one properly. I don't want to take the chance of damaging one of my actual good computers that aren't going to the recycling bin. So that's about it for this video. One thing that came to mind is maybe it would be fun to drop these and watch how that looks in slow motion with the GoPro's uh, 240 frame per second video. So I'll just add that on at the end if it's worth watching. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.